And what is up? And what is going on? And how are you doing? The judgments on this Ellen Greenberg case have flipped more times than a politician on an election cycle. But while I was reading through some notes and some statements, I got curious about this door latch that seems to be puzzling everybody. And I stumbled across a video, and I think you might be interested to hear it too. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, we know the fiance's statement right here to the police that he left the gym, went up to his apartment building, couldn't get in, knocked on the door, sent a series of those questionable text messages, went back down to the lobby to talk to the security guard about breaking into the door and him coming up to help him open it. And the the security guard would say, hey, I can't do that. I'm not allowed to leave this post. But in his statement, he said that him and the security guard went back up to the apartment to break in. But we already know from video camera footage provided by the security guard, and we know from statements from the security guard, he didn't go anywhere near that place. So that's the first lie. But also, he showed security footage to the police. It was only the fiance, nobody else. And, and the door being latched, of course. It's very confusing. They were six stories up, snow-covered balcony with no tracks. And honestly, I don't think anybody could get up there anyways because it's incredibly thin. So it is just him and her. How does that usually play out? Moving forward, though, I asked myself, how could he close this latch from the outside? I stumbled across this video. Y'all tell me what you think. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. I'm on the other side of the door, so I'm going to open this up, and suddenly it is locked. So I'm going to take my string here and fish it through. You need a little dexterity because you need to get your hands in here. So I'm just going to kind of fish it through here and then do the flossing technique on the lower part. And so I flossed it, I got it on the back or, or the bottom ball bearing. So I kind of fish it out like that. And now I want to take the, uh, the, the, the door side and or the opposite side and, and fish it back in through like that. Okay, so I've got that. And then I'm going to floss it from the top side like that. So now the top string and the bottom string are securely uh, held by those little ball bearings. And now if you have a really fat hand, this may not work. Uh, you may just get your fingers in here. Some people can get their entire hand through, but so small hands help. But what you want to do is just get the string looped on the back side of this bar. Not the ball here, but the bar. And then I'm just going to pull the string just so it's tight. And then with the two ends, one up and one down, I'm just going to kind of pull this so it shuts, and hopefully I can open up this door. So you can see from that video, it is possible to close a latch from outside an apartment complex. Now there have been theories that said, well, he broke it beforehand and, and, and simulated a break-in when he kicked in the door. But according to the reports and the videos I've seen, there was no noise or banging heard before the sound of him breaking in. And if there are no sounds of banging before he broke into the home, what other possible way could it be to close that latch from the outside? Like we said, we know nobody came up through the balcony. We know nobody went to that apartment beforehand. And we know several of those wounds were caused after her passing. Now, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. This is just a guess. I stumbled across that video, and I thought maybe it could bring some insight into this situation. 
I am personally more curious about your thoughts. We already know, point blank, the whole reason this incident is working the way it's working is garbage police work. Straight up garbage police work. We got chain of custody issues with the laptop. We got erroneous statements about medications floating around and and how all this, you know, her taking her medicines cause this. I mean, it may be possible, but at the doses found in her system, they were normal amounts. And I'm not personally aware of of a massive amount of people taking some of these and then stabbing themselves multiple times with a sharp object. I mean, of all the ways to go, that seems like the craziest. Not to mention she did fill up her gas tank before she went home and she was preparing food. So why would somebody do this? If their goals were to unalive themselves. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about this case. It It is tearing my mind up, to be honest with you, and what that family is dealing with because of that substandard investigation. It's uncalled for. I hope they find justice. I hope they, I hope they get the answers they're looking for. A definitive yes or no would be nice. And not shrouded in conspiracy and mystery. It's, it's absolutely unexcusable. That city should be ashamed of themselves. And I hope the people of that city put so much pressure on that mayor. He don't know which way to turn without getting yelled at. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. I appreciate all the support. I'll catch you in the next one.